coming back to the the actual topic of the LRI user authorization, um, I'd like to present to you basically what we discovered and what the outcome was of our work package. So let's start with the mission. I've put it like really broadly here. Basically we said the mission that we have is that we want to have like a really useful and functional authentication authorization that is also kind of a solution, long-term solution, and that can serve as a best practice and can be used further on. So this all here stated in a bit more broadly and nice words. But that was the general idea. Um, how did we do that? So we basically looked at how authentication authorization works in the two member states in general, uh, what also what was proposed by the European Commission, I'm coming back to that a bit later. Then we defined our requirements that would, what we thought will be important for um, for all these topics and dealing with identity and authorization um, over the long term as well. Uh, we compiled the so-called, we call it design document. It's basically a specification information document for you to both read yourself, which should also be understandable for everybody, while there's also, of course, technology inside for you and your technology experts to, to, to get the gist of it, what it's about. And then we discussed, okay, firstly, integrating the existing uh, proposed solution by the European Commission, but also having a setup of a prototype implementation of our uh, solution that we think has, has a better impact. Um, our requirement, one of the main requirements is that we said the national land registers doesn't do not have to deal at all with the need of authentication and authorization. So the land register services that accept the calls from the LRI system they can trust in whatever information they can get, but they don't need to take too much care about it because this, uh, this part is delegated to uh, to section before that. We want, of course, having we will have multiple user groups. You've seen that before in that nice graph that started to pop up, uh, like with real estate agents, a bit smaller than the classical roles. We also discussed that we want a decentralized authorization management. What does it mean? Uh, that we don't have one platform where everybody has to go there and to does the authorization for their uh, for for their uh, people there, but that you can use and integrate that into your own systems, uh, so that you have one point or however your your process administrative processes run within your organizations, you can integrate that and don't need to have like split up your authorization information over two hundred platforms. So LRI is not one of those platforms. You can integrate them. We want a standardized process saying, okay, this should be fit for future extension, this should be available over long term and should also pose on a technology that will allow that. We want it to be extendable because, of course, we have been Estonia and Austria, but we haven't been your country, so we don't know yet what other requirements will come up, but that's part of the first question. What do you need uh, in the background? So it would be very kind if you, ask, uh, if you answer this question. Yeah, And we want to be open enough to extend our system. We want to guide as a best practice, and we want this long-term solution, as mentioned before, so that it's not a one-time shot, and then for every system we didn't do something new. Over the next phase, we do something new. Okay, so let's compare countries briefly. So we've got Austria, which is heavily federated. So we've got three layers of federation, like, govern like government levels of federal state, state like local state, like then and then municipality, and then we've got agencies on the side, and we've got self-governing bodies in very strong positions in different kinds of how they organize. So it's really, we're quite good at being quite complicated. We're really good at that. Um, and because of this, we started in 2001 already to um, develop a so-called intergovernmental federation, where we said, OK, it's important for us that one governmental agency, one governmental body can access other governmental systems to retrieve information so they can directly access their systems. That's what we, how we deal with these problems of this high complex system. Um, maybe a side point, I'm involved in this part of work since 2005. So I've seen quite a lot of it, I've seen how it develops over the last almost 15 years. For us, the EID in the governmental sector, not in the citizen sector, is just one way of authentication. Different governmental bodies use it, different don't use it. They use other means of authentication of their, their employees, uh, the civil servants. Um, yeah, so that's, it's just one of the ways to deal with it. In the citizen case, it's the main case, but 
for, for governmental employees, it's not the main case. Or depends a bit on where you work, mainly. On the other side, we've got Estonia, which is more centralized in terms of how the processes run. Um, and which they, what they have, which was very interesting for us to see, they simply say, okay, we've we built a highly advanced, I would call it a data sharing platform, where they basically allow a business object to be transferred with, to between and to, um, to their, they call, as far as I know, they call it a digital working environment. So it's not like I access other people's system, but the data come to me and then I can work with it. Uh, the EID is used very widely also in governmental settings. So if different systems. Then we've got the European Commission with the central system, who has to mediate in the, not only between the two of us, that it was easy, it was very constructive, but also for the future, we have to mediate and see that we find a common ground. So that's the, that's the structural. So from that on, we defined, okay, there's going to be three major components we need to talk about in this topic of authentication and authorization. Somebody who will, is there a laser on here or not? No, that's something different. I don't know what I did, but something is so we've got somebody who will provide identity, uh, identity provider that can be your governmental organizations, but also can be others. Yeah, could be other bodies, like for example, in Austria we've got a portal of notaries. So the notaries themselves have, they have their own portal system. They can actually uh, provide identity of proven notary, notaries. Notaries. Um, then we've got the LRI system as a system who consumes this authentication information. Uh, and then we've got the service layer, as we said, that shouldn't be concerned with that. They only get the information um, and uh, then can use the information for their needs. Okay, so that's the three components that we, that we worked out. The audience, quite clear. We've got, as of course we discussed it before, of course, citizens and businesses that access it, yes. But the main thing is, so we've got anonymous access for them and also service accounts, basically you can re-log in and get some like, service level, but it's not really authorization in that sense because they only have all have the same level of what they can do with this. Uh, it's just a nice way to, to repeatedly log in if you need more than once. On the side of the administration, of course, we've got a bit more wider audience. We have cross-border queries, as we discussed them already, um, which we want to integrate with existing infrastructures, uh, and it has to be because we don't want to disrupt process on your side. So it needs to somehow integrate somehow into your processes. And also includes, we, administration we also included, not, not real administration people, but like ad, notaries, legal professionals, self government that, that keep a role in society and have a legal role. So we also call, uh, subsumize them as administration access. So what about the solution? How did that work out? Uh, basically, it started with having this, as I think it was mentioned briefly, uh, there was a proposed solution by the European Commission that's called the, Pro the Professional Authentication System, uh, which is a proprietary, self-developed little solution that they said, okay, let's use this one. Uh, it's a token-based system, this is not technology-wise. But basically, it was a very simple system, uh, which raised a lot of concern within our group, because we said, okay, what we want for this LRI to actually succeed also in this perspective, in every perspective, has to be that it has to be maintainable. And such as, as said, I'm 15 years in this domain, such proprietary systems you will tend to have the the tendency to really go out of out of its way to get more expensive because maintenance will cost and cost and cost. And of course, security constraints also came up, especially from my side, because if you have like such a proprietary solution where everybody has to implement this on on their side as on the identity provider side, then everybody has to take security into their own hand and that has to adhere to those rules. There is no service products and services available for that, because we have to build itself. It cannot integrate in existing products, so we have to somehow put it on somehow. So it's always glued together. It's never that good. And there's also no standardized description how this will work. That's like the core concerns that we have. And from then on, I actually wanted to show how it runs, but it doesn't run anymore with the PAS system. Um, from then on, we said, okay, let's talk about how could be the real solution for that, like a real solution for those needs that we defined. And we said first, okay, we want to have a federation based on a standard technology that is industry independent, like industry widely accepted, that is strategically aligned with the IDAS, because it doesn't make sense that we build something new and then there is already something happening in behind, that is easily extendable, that is, and that we can split into three areas saying there's authentication, so identification of users, there's authorization, so giving a right to a user, 
and there is accounting information which might be needed for your land registers for uh, accounting purposes. So it's additional attributes. And we want to have a standardized description of the so-called metadata so of the system run so that it could be easily be switchable and if you change your system, you simply can easily change over to, to, to the system. Um, so basically, coming back to that component picture of before, we still have those, we have those three components. We say now the identity provider provides the identity, including the authorization. So at this side, authorization is done. At this side, it's, gonna, it's said, okay, Dietmar Gombots, he's, he's a clerk, so that's why he has this right to do extra stuff that you don't usually have. Or the notary, chamber of notary could be self-governing body. They can say, okay, this guy who is currently logging in, uh-huh, he's... Officially not really, we prove that we're liable for that. We, we actually provide that. So here we have got an entity providing. Of course, we also have EIDOS here, basically saying, okay, you're a citizen. Yeah. And at the LRI level, we only have the user interface, plus we verify the authentication, not the actual authentication, but what we allow each identity provider to do. So we say, okay, coming back to that in a second anyway, say, okay, this is the, uh, the notaries uh, that are coming. They, of course, are allowed to do legal professional things, that's our old system, but they're not allowed to be like full public officials because they're not, they're legal professionals, or whatever is the mapping that you do. On the service level, nothing changes, service simply accepts it. So we basically broke it down here for you, basically providing information, basically the assignment of rights, so basically the assignment of authorization information additional to your citizen, the additional authorization information is done at the identity provider, um, we also add accounting information. This side can be provided by the identity provider, saying, okay, if you do, I need invoices, this is the information that I need. The land register takes over this information, uh, needs to know the structure of the access rights, and then checks if this right is eligible for this identity provider. So not for this user, because you can't know that, because it might be that you're leaving and your new person comes in, so he gets a right, so we don't want that. We simply say, okay, the land register checks with the identity provider and gives them a maximum set of rights. And the service level only takes over these attributes and can be, sh can be fully secure that whenever it gets information from the LRI, whatever it gets on authentication authorization is proven and checked and don't, don't need to care about anything here. I simply use them for my protocoling, might it be revision protocoling technology or accounting information. So basically what we do is we provide, uh, so what I always call an AA, AAA token, so it's authentication, authorization, and accounting. So three types of information. Authentication is the identity of the user accessing it, where we heavily rely on the EIDAS profile. We simply say, okay, that we get it in the same structure as EIDAS does. On authorization, we say, okay, there is basically we have a role-based system saying this role is allowed to do certain things in, in, in certain Land registers, so there's now currently four roles defined. Anonymous access and private are actually the same, it's just that for anonymous we don't know who the user is. Like really, who, who, there's no name and so on uh, to it. Private user is like a private recurring user. Legal professional and public official are then for two different target groups as outlined in the design document. So that's one of the questions we're going to have if we extend the LRI project. It's going to be if this role structure is going to fit and how it's going to develop with your countries. On accounting, there's, of course, additional attributes like your organization, organizational unit. Is there a specific recipient ID that should be, or recipient that should be on the invoice? Is there a cost center that should be in some information? We only made up four. Might be that there are more, more needed. Um, so how does it actually work? So basically, I'll give you the first view. This is when you use the IDOS. So basically, at the LRI system, you say, ah, I want to log in, and then I want to use my citizen card. You get into the IDOS selection screen. It redirects you to your local, I uh, can't remember how that's called. It has a special name, the, basically the endpoint. Uh, and here you, here you log in with your citizen ID, with your electronic ID, and with SAML web profile, this is the technology as SAML, it comes back to the LRI system giving you the information. And basically, it's rather the same if you do that now within your own organization. Basically, you're saying at the LRI system, I want to log in. Uh, it jumps over to your portal, or whatever we call it, portal here, or your identity provider. And this identity provider uses then its 
uh, data store to say, okay, you are having this right, you are having this right, I'm having no rights because nobody wants me to access anything. Anyway, so there the data is, comes from the authorization data and it provides you now again about the same, same um, web profile to the LRI system. Uh, this, as said, this is based on this technology summary. I won't bother you with technology insights. Basically, what's interesting about it, it's, it's a, an, an industry standard. It's widely used. It's available in all major ecosystems. You'll find it in every platform. There is uh, basically, it's all, all around everywhere. It's based on XML. It's just as, uh, some, some document format. Interesting it, there is product support. So there's, a, there's on one side, there is quite a lot of open source implementations for it, so if your if your institutions rely on open source, you can use it. But there's, of course, also commercial products available, even with service levels attached. So this could be very important for some of you. And SAML is extensible by default, so I have so-called attribute sets. I can add attributes on the go, because with PAS, I would have needed to change the token and would have needed to change, if I need a new information included, I would have to change every system within that. With some, I don't have that because I can add additional information and as long as we don't consume those, it is not a big big deal to, to simply add. Furthermore, it has something that might be interesting in the future, that's so-called attribute providing, where basically we say, okay, I register, I'm logged in as, as my citizen, and now I say, ah, I forgot, I'm also, uh, a notary, um, and my profession is that, and at the same time the system already with logging in checks a couple of so-called attribute providers and checks with the system of the notaries, ah, Dean McCombs is a citizen of course because he's always a citizen, but he's also working a notary with this authorization information. So that could be uh, quite interesting in future because that's some big deal that we're currently seeing coming up with lo lots of different information distributed everywhere. Okay. So, and what happens next? Now you're logged in at the LRI system, uh, and the LRI system gets all this authentication information uh, from the identity provider. Uh, basically, now with the web service call uh, to, to make those queries that you configure in your masks, uh, uh, it adds with an HTTP header just some information. This, this whole um, token will be added here. There are some general thoughts also here. We said we're going to do this uh, in this way because we said, okay, we don't want to make this part part of the actual message. Imagine you've got a letter and then in on every letter you need to fill out first the information. So if it's in a, in a cover, you always have to rip it open, read it and see what's on there. So we basically write it on top outside of the, outside of the, uh, of the letter. So you don't have to open a letter to actually read it. Uh, uh, because this would limit, again, extensibility and maintainability, and that's very important. As I've seen over 15 years, this is something that will be quite annoying if you don't do that. Uh, yeah, parsing already said, so I don't need to read the letter. Uh, but for doing that, of course, the, this channel needs to be secured so that nobody can, if it's only on the outside, nobody should be, should be allowed to read it apart from the involved parties. So we need something to do that. So basically, we'd send this via these headers, which can be easily be read, can be read at any stage, so you can easily use it for revision, you can use it for, uh, for technology, uh, for technical logging, you can also use it if you need to first check that something actually goes through to your land register, uh, so that's, that's rather easy. On the implementation side, we use a client certificate, a way of securing this connection that nobody can read it, and that it is provided that there's a trusted relation between uh, the LRI system and your uh, and your land register, your local ones, uh, and the token is just added as the header, and then there will be an additional so-called transaction ID that is normally not there, basically giving each transaction a unique ID to allow you to find together um, any kind of issues if you ever have, have one. Yeah, full picture, basically that's now very technical. I'll leave that in there for you to, if you want to read it, if you have questions. So the question now for you is, okay, it's all quite, it's first of all, it's not part of your core business, but like, how would that work out? How do I integrate this system? Basically, in the design document, you'll find all the rules and the organization, how it works. It's not yet implemented on real life because we're currently integrated with the PASS system, but this is a proposal that we already have and the commission is very eager to actually adapt this, this, this system, just they don't have currently the resources available to do that. What we actually have in Austria is we have a test infrastructure that's actually 
finished. I didn't tell you that yet. Where is my ideas? <laughs> <laughs> because I finished that with Barry recently. Uh, basically, where we have the test cases provided, the whole technology stack. So we could also offer it to you if you want to see how it works or want to test integrate. We have an identity provider there, a separate one. We've got a test service site for basically uh, representing the LRI system. Uh, and it's also integrated with EIDOS. Uh, we actually recently did our first EIDOS, fully EIDOS case there as well. So we have that. So you could, your technology guys could actually have a look at that and see what it means for them uh, quite easily because we can provide you something to see it. It's not only paper, there's something here. As said already, what's needed is currently it's in integrated with the PASS system, uh, uh, but we need to productive integrate the sample based on our new solution with the justice portal that depends highly on the how it hap how it goes on with the commission um, so that's going to be a big part of the deal for the next step for the next project it's going to be okay how is that going to work out from my side um, and then I also would like to have the design document like not in the full because it's really extensible but like some major points for di different target groups one for you guys one maybe for very technical guys online to, to ba basically be able to uh, um, read it online. You need to read, I don't know how many pages the design document has now, but it's quite extensive. Okay, I think that's it. Yes, so I'm more than happy to answer any questions now. As said, I'm working at this part, which is a subsidiary of the federal, but anyway, so I'm here for any questions regarding all authentication authorization also till to tomorrow. If you have any questions now or later, I'm always happy to help. Okay? Are there... Mm -hmm. I think there was already a question. Matthias, didn't you want to answer other questions? Or yes. I just, just so wanted to give the floor to somebody who has a question, actually. Okay, Back there, yes, please. Working now? Yes, yes it's, it's, working. it's working. Yeah, you mentioned uh, an anonymous user, non-identified user, which can have access to the LRE. Um, do you think uh, this may keep uh, make the door wide open for dysfunctional abuse, for dysfunctional use of the data mm -hmm. when you have uh, uh, the possibility to offer it to an uh, anonymous person? In case when you look at the own plans of your government, about the digital mummery, uh, we're also thinking about to, um, to, um, to fighting against this uh, mummery. So uh, from the point of view of a, a, a land registrar, um, we have always identified persons. Every land register procedure is a procedure with persons and companies. So do you think it's uh, maybe a problem for having this access for anonymous person and for for opening the door for dysfunctional I, abuse, uh, I go it. Yeah, you can do it as well. But I <laughs> yes. Uh, thank you very much. Um, as I have mentioned at the very beginning, um, every member state has to decide what kind of access uh, somebody has. Uh, in Austria, the the. In general, the land book information is public, so nobody has to identify himself or, her, or herself, even at the court or even at the notary, wherever he is. If he wants to have information, he receives it. Due to the fact that every European citizen is equal to an Austrian, uh, we have to allow this to others too. This is a very limited access uh, in reality, because you have to pay for everything in Austria, so this regulates uh, this story. Uh, Coming to the member states situation, it is clear that in countries like in Germany, where you ha don't have uh, direct access as an anonymous uh, participant uh, logging in, uh, you will not have access to the, uh, to the system. This is up to you as a member state to decide what kind of access you have or not. No, no, this is... Uh, uh, well, the problem is... Uh, <coughs> Uh, to, due to the data protection regulation, we have to deal with this. Uh, uh, business register, land register, and some other registers we have in Austria that are public. Uh, and uh, we, have, uh, we came to the, the, the result that um, land book is a member state story due to the Lisbon treaties uh, and cannot be deregulated by the commission. 
or by a regulation from the European Union. So the, 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 the core institution as a public land book in Austria remains as it is. Data protect, protection in, 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 the, in the concerning land book means something different. We now have to, to, to lock every question that comes, every query that comes to the land book to save, to, to, to be an enabled, to give answers to the question who has been asking uh, on land book. Besides that, it is still possible that nobody shows a passport on the court and receives land book information, and the same system has to work online. Online is not a way to reduce the right of the normal citizens, and is a right of the citizens in Austria to have access to the land book. Uh, may, I, may I add to that? Uh, the question still is, and it's, it's basically the same as, as Manfred Bezos said, the, the, the mapping who is allowed in which role to do what, if within your case, for example, it's, it's on your side, um, but one part, big part of the second project was going to be to extend this and discuss these roles and see how this will develop. In general, we say that the mapping of the information of, okay, with anonymous access, I can do X, Y, and Z within Estonia or within Austria. We've done a matrix basically saying who can do with what, with which role. And basically that has to be done with you. And maybe in the next project we also come up with additional roles because we find out, okay, we need to distinguish those two roles. So, or those, we need to split this role into one or two roles. I don't want to make it like a thousand roles because that doesn't make sense either. But like we will figure it out in the next step. Yeah. <laughs> Because also for the for the recording. <laughs> yes, it's not a problem uh, spe specific German. I think uh, it's a problem for all languages. Uh, when you open the data for everyone and you do not know the user, and maybe it, the dysfunctional abuse may be that we collect data for building up parallel databases. So probably. Um, but that's currently also a topic that different member states deal differently yeah, yeah, with. Course. So that's. <laughs> Well, uh, we have in Austria we have um, uh, housing agencies, and uh, one or two of them, uh, I know only one by heart. Uh, they have they are collecting data uh, from the Austrian land book and uh, whatever they do with that. The Austrian law says everybody has access to land book information that includes uh, uh, enterprises and whom else, every person, natural or not. And whatever they do with that, um, the question behind is they have to pay for every single byte or bit they have received from us. What they do with that is their story, not ours. And the advantage we have is for, the, for our legal professions, uh, uh, when it comes to somebody who has uh, intermediately uh, worked with data, like this uh, enterprise is doing in Austria, we are not liable for this kind of information. We are liable only for the original information coming from us and not from derivate uh, uh, information. This is clear and they have a time gap. We are the first to open the gates for information because we have the first information and they have it available two or three days later about this time frame. This is our advantage. We are in the market. Uh, we are liable. Uh, we have to compensate. Uh, what the company over there is doing is not my problem. They have paid for the information, therefore they can do whatever they want with it. Okay. Yes, there might be one additional misunderstanding because we have defined those possible roles, but you decide in your own country if you allow this role or not, so you would definitely not allow an anonymous user for Germany. Yeah. Like yeah. Like I also have uh, always identified person and yeah, land yeah, which is yeah. the procedure. I will also have uh, um, an identified person and with yeah, yeah. LRE procedure yeah. uh, because um, uh, what's about when this uh, request is refused? Uh, you have to appeal to the higher yeah. court, for example, and when you have a non-identified user, yeah. and uh, no, 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 what no, what will be you, procedure? That's for you. That's for you. That's for you. Yeah. No, it's uh, in general, I think. It's also no, in Germany, in, uh, yes. Well, there will be a diversity. Uh, what, what access uh, to, to land book or land register data means, uh, I'm deeply aware there will be a high diversity uh, in Europe who is allowed to gain what kind of information, how deep, how broad, whatever it is. This is a question, uh, like Dietmar has mentioned, there are roles uh, that have diff different rights, 
Uh, and uh, we are, this is not the end of the definition, what uh, Dietmar has presented. What kind of role should be available all over Europe to have the whole, uh, all options in? At the end of the day, we have to have all options in. And if, like in Germany, uh, there is a, let's say, a kind of restricted access, we have the, to, to ensure this restricted access for this member state in a, in a proper technical way that it is not allowed as an anonymous to gain information from the German land book, as an example. And there might be in all our countries different approaches. What is allowed legally, what is not allowed? Where are, where are borders, where are limits? And we have to deal with these borders and limits. Where, what kind of, of professions, what kinds of people, of, of person are allowed to do what? With information in land book on, and by the way, cadaster. Because some countries have merged land book and cadaster. So this is the same organization. And uh, we have to deal with all this. What we are standing now is we are, we, have, we are planting an apple tree and he starts to show his first, uh, let's say, small leaves, nothing else. At the end of the day, we have to have a huge apple tree with a huge number of rights, with all the diversity we have, but with the same apples, more or less. And we cannot expect that uh, next year, the next two years, we have a huge number of apples on these small leaves, but it has, it is an apple tree in reality, and we will, we will water them and we will care for him to grow up. Okay, there is a question over here. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, okay. Uh, okay. Um, you, you spoke rather fast, so I may have missed something, but um, you talked a lot about um, an identity provider, yeah. but you didn't really say who who the identity provider is going to be and what identity checks, how they're going to the, do the identity assurance. The, the, the identity provider is going to be... Where is it? Oh, there it's going back. Where is a big picture somewhere? There's a big picture. So the identity provider can be basically any institution within, like we say there's one, one clear identity provider. That's the IDAS framework for citizens where you can basically say, okay, you can get get a provided identity of any citizens. So that would be, for example, if I use my Austrian mobile citizen card, it's called, today to log into that, it would provide my information as a normal citizen here, but there's no authorization attached to it because here I'm only acting as a citizen. I'm not acting on any behalf of any organization. Yeah. So provide the providers who are uh, providing additional information like authorization, they have to be established by regulations. In countries that, that are highly distributed, like Austria, this could and will be multiple ones. For example, I know that the notary pro actually has their own identity provider, the chamber, oh no, the chamber of notaries yeah, in Austria, it's like a self-governing body. While the justice, Ministry of Justice, sorry that I'm not saying the whole one, yeah, this is really <laughs> big one. They provide an identity provider for their employees, which basically includes all the all courts, all clerks. So here they, they, they provide these identities. So, uh, so basically in your case, this would be, you would have to see in my structure, do I need only one identity provider here that I have to establish for my people here? Or do I, need, do I have multiple ones? And I can show you one graph that I have that, that adds up at one stage because that could get out of hand somewhere. Where is it? Basically in Austria, we have a wide diversity, so we actually have the, uh, in my picture, I pictured it already, we're going to have something like that, that we actually have the, the actual uh, providers, different ones that we will have in Austria in the mid midterm, have like a bridge basically that the user doesn't have to say, okay, I need to, um, I need to go to this specific one, it has a list of 20 providers, but he goes to, goes to a bridge and we'll have some logic that will automatically redirect him instead of having, like having one intermediate layer, but then this will be the identity provider. But it's basically on, on your side, or I don't know um, which. Each country has to say, okay, or each organization basically, maybe one, like Germany, as far as I understood, each state, like each of the states within the Federal Union of Germany has its own land register, so basically they have to think about it. And, and in a cent more centralized state, it might be easier, there might be one identity provider that you provide, or in a decentralized, like in Austria, it's going to be multiple ones that might want to have access, plus all the players around. But that's a big advantage here because uh, this system is it's called federation, it's called in that term, the technology term. It's actually set up for systems like that where you can add on top a new identity provider because some law changes and you now split up and it's now going to be 
nine identity providers instead of one, or two years later you merge together and it's going to be one instead of nine. You know, it's like we we'll, we all know how policy works <laughs> in the long run. So that's basically the idea. So the member state has to provide, has to think about. That's what we actually talked a lot, like Austria, Estonia. Think about okay, who is going to do that? Is there already a centralized system? That's one of the questions in the back, and and then accordingly say okay. We'll tell the land register system, okay, look in our case, this is the guy you trust, there's this so-called metadata, that's the technology term, that's the trust information for this, it's only this one, or you tell them, that's our three identity providers. And, and all these processes will need some working over time. Okay? There is one more question back here, I think then we're running out of time. <laughs> <laughs> ah, you want to sleep. <laughs> Uh, thank you. Uh, I'm Eva Butter from the Estonian Chamber of Notaries. I have a question related to, as I understand, there are different access levels of information, and it's for the, each member state to decide to whom they will provide the information. But my question is maybe, I'm not sure, I hope to make it clear. Uh, if, for example, Estonia says that we provide access to information to notaries, they are entitled to have it, is there a need also to assess uh, by states whether the notaries in another country also would need the information for the execution of the duties. For example, is it possible mm -hmm. that Austrian, uh, Austria will say, we give access to Estonian notaries because they need this information for fulfilling their obligations, but we don't give access to Latvian notaries because they don't have such uh, competencies, they don't need it. So is there also that level necessary for, to evaluate? Uh, it's it's a <laughs> that's the question. Well, uh, this is um, a rather tricky. Thank you very much for this question. This is one of the the the, the, the core questions. Uh, it goes the same for the the same for the for my German colleague. The the problem is uh, first of all, if if we are not allowed uh, to look into a German land book. Um, are the Germans allowed to look into Austrian land book? This is one of the questions that stands. Uh, uh, but this is clear, they are allowed. And the second question is about, uh, we are speaking a little bit uh, uh, about a circle of trust if an Austrian notary is allowed to enter an Estonian land book with all information available, then the Estonian is allowed to do it in Austria too. We, we, we have to think about the details. Uh, fin Finland has, as far as I know, no notaries. Uh, who is substituting this function in, in, in Finland as, as, as one of the problems. Um, this is uh, something that is not uh, finally uh, done and assessed uh, with us, with all, the f uh, with all the petty details that make a difference between one country and, and the next country, but it has to be examined in the, in the near future. May I add on to that? Um, one of the mo most important questions here is about, about this federation of trust is, what happens now if I assign the role to somebody who is not, like, being a notary doesn't mean the same thing in every country, of course. So I know, for example, a friend of mine is from Italy, and they, they go, it seems to notaries for almost every contract kind of a thing, while in Austria we only go to notaries for certain things. So there's different ways where what a word means somewhere. So we have this, uh, it's actually here as well, on the LRI level, uh, like really in the middle, there's gonna be the, the, it's gonna be the clearing house. So basically you don't assign notary, but you assign one of those roles, your identity provider will say this, this, this Dietma guy who's coming here is, as we currently have four roles, is a public official. Now this hits to the LRI system, and the LRI system needs to take certain steps to ensure that this is the case. So basically say from this identity provider, I only allow these rights, so I don't allow public officials, so I lose my right, then I'm not, ex not able to access it. That's one, one very important, that's more a technology security concern. But it also shows up what, what needs to be done, which is needs to be a matrix saying, okay, which, with which right can, can this identity, uh, can this country access what at, at my national, uh, uh, now with which right can any country access my, my na national land register on the land register side? So basically, if, if, a, if, a, if, a, if an, uh, not unknown, what is it called again, anonymous users coming to Germany, they say, nice of you, but you don't get anything here because in our case it doesn't work. So basically what we need to do is for every new integration or for every new state, it's not the integration because it could be multiple identity providers or multiple organizations, we need to think about, okay, 
this is how we defined our roles. So this is the obligation of each of them, because there is no role notary. There's a role legal professional currently and a role public official. And, and this entails some basic rights, and these basic rights then also depend on who in, in the case of Austria is entitled to do this. And, then, and so this, we, this one we need to uh, review for every country. And, and basically set up, okay, in your case, in your country, in Estonia basically it says, okay, this one is doing, and everybody can do this, and uh, public official is only who works at the ministry, nobody else is allowed to do this specific case. Um, and in this discussion in the future, we will come up, surely come up with that this for all is not going to be enough, then I can again with Manfred, but first we need to have this discussion. In the end, we'll work out a system where you get a role, and this role exactly describes which rights assigned to that, and in one state, this role will be maybe only assigned to public officials. In another uh, country, it might also be that this role can be assigned to a notary or another, or maybe only a standard legal professional and a normal lawyer, because in that case, it is possible. So that's to be uh, worked out in the future as well. Yeah. Just to add to, 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 to Dietmar, uh, concerning, let's say, legal profession, we did not... Uh, fix it to notaries, lawyers, attorneys, uh, whatever uh, are available in, in that world. And uh, we have a representative here. Uh, it, it, this, we will ask the Federation of Notaries in Austria, by, by the way, for this uh, question, what in details should, is, should be come in practice and what should not come in practice, for sure. I don't know why I should decide this, or somebody else should decide that. This is a collaboration story, a discussion story with the notaries of Europe, with the lawyers of Europe, with other groups of Europe. What is the difference in this country, that country? How shall we set up the system? Okay. I'm glad that we have created a very intense discussion here. Um, I have still to ask you uh, to postpone questions regarding authorizations probably to the coffee break. Um, uh, Dietmar will be here, uh, of course.